In this time-lapse modeling example, uh, which I have sped up about five times, I'm going to show you how to model a uh, simple aircraft okay, based on the Beechcraft Sierra. Now these blueprints I've downloaded from the internet and I've prepared them with uh, red guidelines in GIMP. And uh, right now I'm using a function blender called import images as planes. So I brought the images which I've prepared into the, uh, the scene. Okay, so once you've brought it in, you can uh, delete away the cube and then resize the image planes. And what I'm doing is I'm positioning the top view until I get my reference to look fine. Okay, then I duplicated another piece which to be used as uh, the front view reference. And then finally I just uh, duplicated another one for the side. And you can see here what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the references so that the red guidelines match. Now I have another video which I've done uh, which I explain uh, how to do this, how to create an image reference for uh, modeling. But it's for the older version of Blender, but uh, the techniques is similar. Okay, so next, the next step which I did was uh, I used a knife tool to cut away the faces which I don't need. Now, you can leave the faces there if you feel they can model with uh, the extra images around. So this is just a matter of personal preference. So once that is done and all the reference images are aligned, I started the modeling uh, process from just a ordinary cube. Okay, so I split the windows into two so that the viewport into two so that uh, you can see uh, the changes being done uh, from one view to the other. So the cube is an ordinary cube with half of it removed and with a mirror modifier applied along the uh, x-axis. And in the edit mode it was elongated and edge loops are added in uh, in the appropriate locations and scaled to match the reference. And you can see that um, you can have the option of displaying the, uh, the mesh in wireframe mode. If you click on the uh, object icon, which is the cube icon on the properties panel on the right. So with the mesh selector, you can actually change it to uh, wireframe so they can see through it. Now if you are not too sure on how to do that, you can check out the, uh, the V2 rocket tutorial which I've done. So that is in my channel. You can uh, look through that uh, to get an idea how this is done. So basically now I'm inserting edge loops so that I have extra detail to move around to match my reference. So I'm constantly switching between the, uh, the side view, the front view and the top view to get the, uh, the details to match the reference. And over here what I'm doing is I'm inserting more edge loops so that I have enough geometry to pull out and shape the, the wing, the root of the wing. Okay, so I'm shaping it to match the uh, the airfoil shape. This is the shape that uh, allows the wing allows planes to fly. So I'm trying to keep it uh, as accurate as possible. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm detailing the wing tip, and because of my scaling, it caused the wing to be tapered, where the drawing shows that the wing is. Uh, a parallel wing. So I could have extruded, I, I could have inserted uh, more geometry towards the tail end and then extruded the, uh, the tail stabilizer, but uh, I choose to uh, create a cube and then reshape the cube to form the stabilizer instead. Now the cube is created within the uh, edit mode, so it is part of the matter. So you get an ordinary cube with a bunch of edge loops applied and I given a teardrop cross section shape after reshaping it. Then I rescaled it to uh, and then moved it to match the location according to the reference. 
then insert a couple more edge loops for the detailing and finally um, I am moving the edge loops so to match where the root of the vertical stabilizer is going to appear and uh, I select the faces and then just extruded it okay over here I'm selecting the top group of faces or uh, vertices and then just flatten them insert one edge loop and then just move those group of vertices to form that uh, that segment okay so now generally the shape matches okay now another edge loop to fine-tune the uh, rounded end Okay, essentially I, I have blocked out the shape, so I've applied a subsurf modifier and give it three levels of subsurf. And you can see I, by adding edge loops, you can just uh, tighten the detail. Here I'm just shifting the uh, vertices to give it a more rounded look. Right. And the next part is uh, I'm creating the propeller. And again, from the textured shading, I change this box to display in the wire as you can see on the right settings so uh, it started out as half a box and uh, inserting a few edge loops okay what I did here is I press forward slash on the number pad to isolate this so I don't have the rest of the objects within the uh, viewport to distract me so I can just focus on one of the propeller blades so as you can see I've uh, modeled the cross section of the propeller to have a another airfoil shape and over here I just found out that the blade is too long and I twisted it so that it has a twisted propeller blade look smoothed out the shading after applying a subsurf modifier then duplicated another one rotated it 180 degrees and then I created a cone which I positioned it right at the center and I deleted the base of triangular faces and I used a knife tool to cut a loop across which I adjusted to midpoints in the tools panel okay so by doing that you will have four sided faces which you can insert edge loop and I used the control E to bring up the edge special to slide the initial edge loop forward to give it a better rounded look of the spinner and finally I position it front and then the plane is complete.